Hey everybody, um, today I just want to do a quick video on how you can create um, you know, user interfaces that are dockable, undockable in LabVIEW. Um, so, you know, the idea being, right, I can have different views and I can extract those views and make them like their own window um, and have be able to, yeah, basically have multiple views in that way. Um, so, and there's probably different ways of doing this. This is just uh, one way that I wanted to show. Um, so, for this example, on the UI, I just have this um, list box here, um, just uh, sign, square, sawtooth, and I'm just gonna switch. I have three different things that I'll load into this sub panel on the right. Um, I'll show you, you know, how we can view all of those. And then when I click this button, it will pop out the current, um, window um, and basically be a, like an asynchronous uh, little, uh, you know, separate window that I can move around, resize, etc. So um, just to take a little look at this, so these are actually references to my three um, VIs that I'm going to be inserting into this sub panel. Um, all they really are, each one, the front panel is just a graph. Um, so. I've got, you know, they all look identical, but the data that's displayed on the graphs will be different. Um, but we'll take a look in here. Um, but basically what, oops, each one of these is basically just its own queued message handler. So there's an event handling loop, and it's really not doing much, right? There's a, it's just really waiting for a shutdown event to be sent. This is just a dynamic user event. Um, or um, if the user clicks the, uh, to close the panel, um, it'll handle closing this VI, not actually stopping it from executing, but closing the front panel. So, um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and then down here, um, in this case, there's really not much going on. We have an empty init case. In the idle case, we're just generating a, um, a sine wave. And when we get the close command, which comes from this dynamic user event, we're shutting it down. So there's really not a ton to it. It's just a pretty simple um, kind of queued message handler. Um, and then we are passing in this UI shutdown event, um, which is right here. I'm just creating a, <coughs> um, a user event um, called shutdown, and I'm passing that into all three of these. So when I send the event, it will stop all three of these kind of asynchronous processes. And each of these is a queued message handler of its own, um, and they look exactly the same. The only difference being that I changed what type of signal it's generating, but other than that, they're all identical. Um, and they don't have to be. That was just for uh, demoing this. Um, this is just a little sub VI that's just launching the sub panel page. So um, just yeah, pulling in the uh, um, uh, basically the the name of the VI, the shutdown event, uh, passing all of that into um, the uh, VI that's running. Um, and yeah, just doing the asynchronous call there. So nothing super crazy. Um, I'm inserting the sine wave into my sub panel to start out just so there's something displayed. And I'm building all of these into an array. Um, then um, when we change the list box, I'm just going to remove whatever's inserted right now, and I'm going to just index um, this kind of array to pull um, whatever I clicked and insert that into the sub panel. So that way I can switch between all these different views. I'm just going to remove the old thing and insert the new thing, um, which is pretty simple. Um, when we close the panel, we're just going to fire that shutdown event and then stop this loop. So it's going to stop this one from running and it's going to fire this user event and that'll shut down these three asynchronous processes. So there we have that. And here's how I'm actually doing the popping out. So um, when I click the pop out button, we are going to remove the VI that's currently uh, in um, the sub panel. Uh, we're also going to pull the reference to that VI um, after we've removed it. You have to be careful to make sure that you do that in the right order. So we need to remove it from the sub panel first. And then I'm going to use this invoke node on the reference to open the front panel of that VI. 
Um, and then I'm going to just go insert the first reference into that subpanel. So this is a simple example of kind of basically how we can pop these out. Now um, let's just do a little demo. So yeah, and all these are set to kind of dynamically scale. So I can go sine, I can see my square wave, my sawtooth, I can switch between these uh, when I want to. I can pop this out and I basically get this asynchronous. Um, yeah, and I can still kind of switch between things here. When I go to my square wave, um, it doesn't actually load in correctly um, and that's because it's popped out here. Um, but, you know, um, if I wanted to, too, I could even remove this square from the, the list box when I pop it out if I don't want people to be able to select it. Or you could even do something like, um, instead of just displaying nothing, you could display like a VI that says, hey, this, you know, uh, this uh, VI, you, you know, the view you've selected is currently undocked, right? So it's out here. So you could do something like that. Simple example, I didn't include it, so just if it's already popped out, you just get a white screen. Um, but yeah, you could have some text here that says, hey, that's already undocked. Redock it to view it in here or something. Or you could even use clones if you wanted to, right? You don't necessarily have to remove the VI. You could instead just launch a separate clone that is outside. So different ways you could do it. Um, you know, I can go here. I can pop out this, so then I can view all three at the same time. Um, all of these are fully resizable. Um, yeah, and then when I want to undock or dock it back into the software, I can just close out of it. And now, right, I can go view all of them again. I can pop that one out. Um, but yeah, so that's the basic idea behind docking, undocking. Um, not super complicated. Um, and there's different ways you can do this as well, right? So like I said, this is just a simple example. Um, I want to just show one other example that's a little more polished um, of this in action so you can kind of see how it can be done. Um, but yeah, let's close out of that. Sweet. Um, so I have a little video here. Um, sorry if this is a little hard to see. Um, but basically here we have a couple different views. Um, so this is a sub panel here and I'm able to change the views to see different information um, on these different sub panels. Um, and yeah, I can, you know, they all have their own controls and indicators, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm able to toggle between all the different views. Um, like you can see, um, there can be, you know, a ton of different information. Um, Let's go, we've got, yeah, some, another view there. We've got our uh, kind of positioning view there um, for being able to, yeah, this is a, a motion system with a whole bunch of other instrumentation. So being able to, you know, run that. Um, and all of these sub panels are pop outable. So um, we can dock them, undock them, Etc. So, um, all this different stuff. So, um, let's go to where I pop it out. Sweet. Oh, yeah. So, um, if you look right here next to my view list, I have this little pop out icon. So, when we click that, it will work similar to my demo I just did. Um, so, I can take like that view, for example, and pop it out. And I, I pushed it off screen, but I can take another view and I can also undock that. Um, and then I can also go when I'm done, redock those and then be able to access the views again. So um, yeah, really makes your user interface um, much more dynamic. Uh, the user can kind of use it to their own, you know, how they want to use it, right? Um, sometimes we have data divided up on a whole bunch of different pages, um, and it's, it's nice to be able to just view all of the data um, together, right? So I can pop this one out, pop this one out, and I can you know resize them and lay them out all side by side as I'm doing testing. Um, but it's not like that permanently, so that way you know it's you know it's only there when you want it. So 
Um, yeah, um, and like I said, there's probably different ways of doing that too. I've had good success just doing the sub panels and just saying, hey, remove this VI and then um, uh, open it. Um, and then when I close it, I'm not actually stopping the VI from running, but just closing the front panel, and that way it can be reinserted into the sub panel. So yeah, that would be how you can create a dynamically kind of dockable and undockable user interfaces in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.